Hi, good morning everyone. This is Martin from Technology UK. Uh, big thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, very pleased to be this afternoon and also to welcome uh, my fellow presenter Guy Griffiths. Um, so Guy, if you want a webcam on as well, great to see you. Uh, what we're going to do first of all everyone is just make sure that everyone can hear us. So you should have a little option to pop your hand up in the air. Um, if you can hear us okay, if you could just pop your hand up. Superb, fantastic, that's great. If you could pop the hands back down again for one moment. That's great. And you should be able to see um, a slide with Technogym Talks on uh, and for better or for worse, myself and Guy up the top as well. So if you could just pop your hands up just to confirm you've got our screen and you guys can see us. Fantastic, that's amazing. That's great guys. If you could all drop your hands down now, we're not gonna use that feature for the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the webinar. We will be doing a Q and A at the end. Um, so there'll be an opportunity for you guys to, to ask the expert, ask Guy at the end. So um, Guy, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off on the slides just for the intros. Fantastic, so just by way of introducing myself, uh, you can also see the impact that Corona's had on my hair during the time while I've been off. So uh, it's getting much, much taller. For some of you, uh, great to see some names that I recognize and really appreciate and uh, good to be introduced to those of you that I, I've yet to meet yet. So. Uh, by way of a very brief background on the digital manager for Technogym UK, um, come from an operational background prior to that in the fitness industry um, and also a time in mobile phones. So uh, I'll be your host for today. Um, with, I'm then also very, very pleased to welcome Guy Griffiths. So Guy, if you want to just pop your intro slide up for me. Um, I'm sure a number of you will know Guy already, uh, either from working at him, from Elevate, from other, um, other um, sort of scenarios around the UK. Um, Guy founded GG Fit 2008. Um, he's been working not only with Technogym, uh, but a lot of others in the uh, in the industry. Um, he's got a fantastic book, if you haven't read it, called Stick Around, Strategies to Keep Your Gym Members Motivated. Um, highly, highly recommended. Uh, great to give uh, people in facilities a bit of an understanding of, of strategies to motivate. Um, and as you can see, of course, during lockdown, uh, he's been living the, living the virtual dream, a bit of Joe Wick, some virtual wine tasting and some tw uh, Twitter listening parties as well. So um, without further ado, uh, very, very pleased to introduce Guy. Great to have him with him to that with us today. Um, I'm going to stand down and look forward to seeing you guys at the end. Um, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, so this afternoon, I'm going to take you through uh, three key areas. Um, we've done the introductions already. I'm going to talk about adapting the customer journey. Uh, we're going to talk about member retention before COVID, uh, have a look at the lockdown and the digital scramble, and then talk about member journeys after digital. I'll hand back to Martin uh, for some takeaways and um, some case studies or examples of what clubs have been doing, and then we'll have questions and answers at the end. Uh, very conscious that there's lots of webinars running at the moment, so um, to keep it light and to have a little bit of fun, here is some webinar bingo that you might want to play as we go through. Um, or you might want to play this on other webinars, I know I have. Uh, note down these nine words and uh, count how many times they're mentioned um, as we go through this afternoon uh, and, and we'll see what scores you get at the end. So while you're taking a note of those, um, I'm sure you've all got a pen and paper already to take lots of notes. Um, this will of course be available as um, a, a video or download afterwards. Um, as Martin says, I um, set up GG Fit to help clubs to get their members to stick around longer. So I work a lot with data and motivation. Um, that that two-sided thing is, you know, I do as much coaching as I do analysis. Um, and uh, the positive that I'm taking out of COVID is that there's going to be more data coming out the other side of this. So there'll be more work to do um, and hopefully as well, more people to activate. So this, uh, this might seem like a free webinar to you. It's not a free webinar. Technogym are paying me for this. So what I want to do is deliver uh, lots of ideas for you um, to use as we come out of lockdown. Um, I'm going to talk about some clients. I won't go into specifics of who they are, um, but I really want to make you think um, and, uh, as I say, give you some ideas that you can start using today or tomorrow or over the next few weeks to improve the member retention in your club. So about 40 minutes. Focusing first of all, um, I'm just going to dip into some member journeys in the traditional sense, just to um, set the scene, if you like. And a lot of people ask um, me about how many stages there should be in a member journey, like there's um, a magic number of how many steps there should be. Is a three-step member journey better than a two-step or a four-step? 
um, in my book, it doesn't really matter as long as there is that first step and you try and sell it as much as possible. So a welcome appointment or induction is really key to uh, getting members to stick around longer. Now in that induction, of course, um, you need to tell them about the app. If you have an app, um, if you don't, you need to get one. Um, the, the welcome appointment is not about health and safety. Um, it is about building rapport with a member and finding out about them. And the other key appointment for me, whether it is appointment four or appointment two, um, is a follow-up. So at the end of the welcome appointment, we're booking a follow-up and we're seeing that member again. As I say, I'm not gonna go into all the detail, but the other things that you can do along the way in the, in the initial member journey um, is to talk about some kind of um, biometric measurement um, or, or uh, body composition analysis, or even just the weigh-in early on, uh, getting people into classes, getting people to join fitness challenges. And whether you measure all these points um, is it's not irrelevant, but for me, measuring how many people have a welcome appointment, and then if you follow that up with a, a follow-up at week four, or at week six, a program review, something like that, that's something that's easy to measure, and we can see how many new joiners are getting inductions, welcome appointments, and how many are following up. We send a lot of comms as well, or we help clubs to set up their triggered communications to go out to members. Um, these are also important parts of the member journey, but key for me here is that this is the new member journey this is not the member journey this is just the first four or six weeks of course it varies from site to site but this is just the new member journey it's very important we get this right but there is a journey beyond this and once we've got active members we need to look at how we keep them active um, and this is this is the the, the rest of the member journey probably 50 60 percent of your members will be on this active member journey at any point in time so getting them into classes, getting them to do fitness challenges are really good ways of engaging with members um, and seeing who the winners are. Hopefully having lots of winners, having members complete lots of challenges is good for their motivation. People who go along that route generally are probably superstars and the fitness industry as a whole tends to focus on and try and appeal to these members that aren't going to go anywhere, that actually are highly motivated. And one of the things I get clubs to focus on more is looking at the average member and making sure they have regular appointments that mean something to them um, and that keep them coming, keep them motivated. So things like body composition analysis, whether you're getting people on a tinnita or an in-body scale um, or just uh, some other kind of measurements that, that are um, straightforward and going to show people their progress, checking in with them through regular communications and surveys and having follow-up appointments, not telling people that they will get a program review every four to six weeks, but making sure they do have regular interactions, you know, four a year might be enough. Um, if you're promising every four to six weeks, you're probably not delivering that. So it's important to, to, to promise what you can deliver and then to deliver it and to keep the regular member motivated rather than focusing on the superhero. As I say, this is just setting the scene, really. Um, I'm not going to go in, into lots of detail on this member journey because this, this, is, this is what I've been doing for the last 10 years. We're going to talk about how it changes. Um, so apps have been, have been becoming more key to this, and I'll go into that in more detail. But also, this is not the member journey. New members, active members, we also need to think in our member journey planning about absentees and about leavers as well. It's all part of the member journey that you should, you should have already defined in your club. So absentees um, or at-risk member journeys um, traditionally is measured on visits. Um, so swipes through the um, front of house system or through the front gate. If you are using systems like My Wellness, um, they've been able to log activity for a long time and been able to give you risk-based on exercise compliance, which is fantastic from a data point of view. Um, of course, we log classes, we look at how often people have appointments, interactions, um, what their body composition is doing. And a lot of that now is measured through um, apps like My Wellness app. We send a lot of triggered comms and we help people set up triggered communications, um, not just email, text is very good for getting absentees or at risk members back. Um, calls are really effective and postcards surprisingly do really well as well. So 
this at risk or absent member traditionally is based on last visit date and that's something that's going to change what's not going to change is sending these kind of messages out and using calls to action to make sure that um, members come back it's no good saying we miss you or we've not seen you or you've not worked out for x days the member knows that what we need to do is change their behavior get them back into the habit with a good call to action to either come in for an appointment or a new class or some kind of um, uh, new workout or, or new measurement so getting people back is key it's part of the current or traditional member journey and then uh, the next part not necessarily the final part is the leavers member journey so when people try and leave a club it would be it would be fantastic if they um, tried to cancel by walking into the facility and saying hi I, I need to chat to you about cancelling um, you can have a decent conversation with someone then and maybe try and turn them around and find out the reasons more often people will call or email but the most common way of cancelling um, you, you hopefully know already is people just cancel their payment they cancel at the bank um, and for the last few years people have not been going to the bank to cancel their gym membership they're doing it more often these days on their banking app so depending on how people cancel there's then the opportunity and, and depending on lots of other factors as well like their membership um, their contract maybe uh, there's an opportunity to to make a call to them and try and get some feedback um not necessarily to turn them around if you can great um but after members do cancel if they if they subsequently do um it's important to confirm their cancellation to say thank you for their business maybe to send them a survey to collect some more feedback from them um perhaps once that the cancellation has gone through they will tell you more and then to follow up and the journey goes on but for now this is just saying that look, the member journey is not just the first um, four to four to six weeks of a membership. It goes on through, and this is your member journey before COVID, if you like. So three key points here: appointments, um, building a sense of community, both through those messages and through classes and through workouts and through challenges, um, and personalising communications. This is what members who stay for a long time appreciate and what they um, and what keeps members coming and building those kind of things into a decent app um, is, is key in, in today's world. So just a little bit there on the um, member journey before COVID. Um, after after um, the 19th of March, I think we went into lockdown here in the UK anyway. Um, and I know there's a few other international um, delegates on this call and i want to take you through what happened online and through some analysis as well and through the communications that happened as we went into and as we've gone through lockdown so there was a scramble um, as the gyms were closed um, emails were sent out i'll come back onto that in a moment um, but there was a plethora of live workouts and classes yes joe wicks was early to it and well done to him um, and I, i've done a lot of them with my kids as martin said at the top um and I, I think they're really that they're, they're pitched really well obviously they're pitched for kids but they're good for anyone um but all that content is recorded and is available afterwards to stream um and uh, it's the same with a lot of the uh, content that, that clubs have been putting out as well people have been linking their strava and fitbit and um whatever other uh, apps and wearables into um wellness apps to, to log their activity and log their workout. There's been a real boost in certainly my friends around here who are all of a sudden running or walking and wanting to be my Strava friend, which is great. But generally this is super for heroes, okay? A bit like the super active members. Um, they're gonna jump on all these uh, options, all these digital fitness um, things. And uh, there's a few new members who are getting down with new workouts um, or streamed content online. What this isn't catering for, what, 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 what I need, what I think we need to see more of um, is something for the less active, for those members at risk. And I'll show you some data on this in a minute, but I believe they need online coaching possibly, or um, I know it seems like the whole world is on Zoom or um, Microsoft Teams or Skype or whatever, um, but phone calls still work. 
And some of the uh, clubs I've been working with have got some amazing results. Well, I say amazing, interesting results from phone calls um, to cancelled or at-risk members who haven't spoken to anyone for a week. And they're really appreciating some of the, the outreach that is going on to existing members. Um, there's lots of surveys going on at the moment, finding out uh, what we should be doing, what people want after COVID. So look at those from um, my customer lens or LeisureNet or from TA6, uh, Woody and Paul who did the webinar last week. Um, I'm seeing some good mindfulness content and some really good basic exercises to just get people into activity on some apps. And I think this is really important. As I say, the superheroes, they're gonna work out whatever. If there's an app to help them do it, they'll log it on that. But I think we need more basic activity and workouts. And also, again, Martin mentioned um, virtual wine tastings. Um, a smaller client of mine who had 193 people on her Zoom uh, boot camp yesterday morning, uh, which has just gone wild, um, also ran a wine tasting on Friday night and had about 30 members tasting wine over Zoom. They bought the wine, they'd all bought the wine from Waitrose, bought these two specific bottles and were doing a wine tasting. And in terms of community and outreach, um, it's, it's just fantastic the kind of things that are happening during lockdown. So virtual quizzes, we ran a virtual quiz in the collective uh, last week. Um, another client of mine is sending out some protein bars by post. Admittedly, the bars are close to their sell-by date, um, but it's, it's better to send these out to members to give them out there to show that you're still thinking of them. There's lots and lots of ideas coming out of lockdown um, and we need to test um, and we need to fail at some things and fail fast and, and learn from what's going on in lockdown so that we can come out of this stronger because more people want fitness, more people want activity. In terms of analysis, don't worry, I'm not gonna go into lots of charts and graphs. I do sometimes in presentations. So I've just got three for you here. This is a big university site um, who do run uh, my wellness. And you can see obviously there's been a drop in monthly active members, but it's only around a 30% drop in active members. Um, they're pretty digitally enabled obviously, and, and it's, it's mostly students and staff, quite a few members as well. Um, but while there is a significant drop, there's still almost a thousand people who are being active throughout April. Um, and it's, it's a similar story in May. Um, looking at it from a different perspective, looking at weekly workouts, you can see here how digitally enabled they are. Not many people are logging their workouts on the kit in the club um, because they're doing that through their mobile app in the club normally. There was a peak there um, when we ran a team workouts challenge on the 24th of Feb that week, um, but obviously a decline in weekly workouts but the decline in workouts is only around 20%, um, you know, down to 20,000 from 25 on average, um, maybe a little more. Um, and the really interesting slide for me anyway, as a, as a data geek, is that the people who are doing more than 10 workouts, um, there's almost as many people still doing 10 workouts a month. Um, in terms of, you know, this, this has dropped here from 900 down to 700. So there's still lots of people doing 10 workouts, but the real drop is people who are only doing one to three workouts. So this is where there is a big decline. And there's a quarter of the people doing one to three workouts and logging it on their My Wellness app. So this is where it just reiterates my point. The superstars are okay. Uh, they're gonna keep active, whether they're logging it on their app or not. Most of them probably are. Um, it's the other people who, if they are being active, they're not logging it, and we want to know more about them. So um, yes, there's a decline in workouts and active members, but the heroes we see is actually being more active. And when you drill down into this data, which I'm not gonna do now, um, we can see and we can take actions and reach out to these people and try and help them. So just a bit of the analysis on lockdown. Um, finally, um, in this section, in terms of communication, and then I'll get onto the digital journey, uh, so we went into lockdown and most people sent out, well, everyone sent out a message saying we're closing. Um, and lots of clubs were surprised and concerned by the amount of cancellations that came back in. I just want to run through some stats and explain why you should still be emailing your members. This is a backup, if you like, to Woody and um, John's presentation last week from TA6. The open rate in the fitness industry is typically around 20%. Um, we saw good open rates up to 76% um, of these messages. Um, but not much more than that. Um, well, that was, the, that was the top open rate we saw. Um, the click rate was very low. 
um, but most sites didn't put anything in the message to click on. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad thing, but that's why the click rate's low. But the bounce rate was really very high. We normally only see north of 10% bounce rate on a, on a new member message where the data input isn't very good. But lots of cancellations still. So first of all, um, again, the guys at TA6 mentioned this last week, this is not a legitimate interest, sorry, this is not a GDPR marketing message you're sending. This is legitimate interest. You should be emailing everyone. If you're not, you will probably get some cancellations from people who have not received the message or not opened the message. Um, the open rates were low, not just because um, of uh, the amount of spam that was going into inboxes, but also because 25% uh, apparently of the UK have been furloughed. So there were, there were an awful lot of out of office emails. Um, so a lot of people didn't read the email, didn't get the email, um, and that's why they've canceled rather than um, you know they've been reminded they've got a membership. I think probably there's something about segmentation and maybe not sending these messages to people who've not visited for six months or longer um, because there will be more cancellations from them. But my point is sending intelligent messages Analyzing the data is important um, and using other communication methods for people who didn't get it. So sending this out by text, calling certain people to uh, reassure them what's happening, whether you're taking payment or not. Uh, if you've got some wish you were here postcards, then why not send those out to people who've not opened this message? Um, you do wish they were here. They can't be at the moment, but it's a nice, it's nice to reach out to them. And important to keep these communications going. Um, again, sorry that I'm reiterating what Woody and um, uh, John Lever said last week, but sending regular updates is really important. It won't, it, it, I, it's more likely to increase cancellations if you send nothing. You need to tell them what's going on by email in the first instance, but on your social channels, on your website, in your phone calls as well out to members. Tell them your current plans. They will probably change, but tell them what you're planning at the moment. Um, and tell them about your financials, tell them about your staff, be honest with your members and tell them what's going on. That's a great way of retaining them. There will be some cancellations um, and to date we've seen up to 30% um, or, or more now um, of members cancelling. Um, but bear in mind that attrition normally is around 6% per month. So actually cancellations due to COVID are probably only around 18%. So maybe a, a, a little bit of light on on, on a dark situation. One other little note here, your ex-members, if you've got a good digital product, you've got an offering, um, for goodness sake, tell your ex-members about it now, um, if you haven't done so already. In fact, if you've done so already, do it again. Ex-members are, are ripe at the moment um, before you reopen to say, look, jump on our digital um, offering. Ex-members, new members, um, anyone in your prospect database, tell them what you've got on your app, tell them about the online classes, particularly if you're offering it for free or, or for a very low fee at the moment. Get people onto that challenge, get people to plug their Strava or, or uh, Fitbit into your app and, and start earning points. And this of course is, um, you do need to bear in mind GDPR, so you do need to do this for people who have opted in, but generally people who have left in the last couple of years, who have not opted out, um, you should be trying to sell your digital offering to them. I say sell it, you should be offering it to them now. So that's my uh, rattle through the communication side of things. Hopefully there's lots of ideas in there for you. Going back to the traditional member journey and just quickly how that changes after digital, there are going to be some key checkpoints here. The first, of course, is the welcome appointment which I typically say is not to do with health and safety. However, the induction, as we traditionally call it in the fitness industry, or welcome session, or step one, or getting started, whatever else, is now mandatory. And it's mandatory for health and safety reasons, okay? In a post-corona world, you need to know what you're doing in the gym. You need to know about social distancing. Um, and if you don't do this, you can't come in the gym. If you do do this and then break one of the rules, you will be maybe banned or get a warning or something else, people do need to have an induction before they come back into the club, I would suggest. And in that induction, whether it's a video or a one-to-one -one or a call or, or whatever else it is that people have to complete at your club, of course you find out about their goals and you talk about that app. 
um, and you get them lined up and ready for all the things they're going to need um, that you would have done in a traditional induction, which in the olden days before COVID was harder to sell, right? So hopefully inductions or welcome sessions are now harder to sell. This is how through the app, through the induction, they book an appointment. This is how they do a fitness test or, or a body composition analysis. This is how they plug their API, their uh, Fitbit, uh, Strava, MyFitnessPal, whatever else into the My Wellness app. They need to have the app to book classes. Um, they can join challenges. All these things become now a key part of the traditional member journey. I believe that emails and, and triggered messages are going to be even more important. There's going to be more triggers as we get more data. Text messages are still going to be important and phone calls um, will, will be part of the cornerstone of getting people into your community in the club, but also a community online as well. So building these different clubs within clubs is going to be really key in the traditional journey after digital. There is also now a digital member journey. When I say digital member journey, I'm not talking about texts and emails. I'm talking more about a digital membership. So this is for people who are not visiting your club, but can still buy a membership because they're going to be part of your um, online community and they will need a welcome appointment. Depending on your resources and the service you're offering and ultimately what you're charging for this, this digital membership, you might just have to watch a video. Um, if it's a very low cost, low resource, almost self-service online membership, a video will probably do. Watch the video, you've had your induction. However, if you want to charge a little bit more um, and get a little bit more from your members uh, uh, and give them probably better retention, then some kind of live call either over all this fantastic new technology we're using like Zoom um, or a good old phone call will do. Uh, so when people have gone through this induction, of course, they will know all about the app. Uh, we will also know a bit more about them. We'll have listened to them, we'll have talked to them about their goals. Um, they will be able to do a fitness test um, and maybe a digital membership allows them to visit the club once a month to come into the club and to jump on the Tanita scales um, and, and to do their body composition. Although Tanita have some great at-home products as well, um, that maybe they do that at home um, and log it into their app, into their system. We'll know about their online attendance. We'll know something about not their visits into the um, bricks and mortar club, but we'll know when they're attending classes, hopefully. If they're not attending classes, we might just know how many calories they've burnt. But all these things will be part of the new digital member journey. And at the end of the first four weeks, six weeks, whatever it is that we define, they'll get a high five message, maybe by text, uh, hopefully by text, because hopefully we ask them for their mobile number as they joined so that we can send them nudges um, by text message if that's something that's important to you. So the new member journey looks a bit different um, in that members aren't necessarily visiting the club, but we can look for excuses to bring them in. Now, once members are active, once they've gone through that first phase, however long that is, whether it's time or number of workouts or number of classes, we now need to work out what is an active member because these members aren't swiping in through the front gate every uh, every day or a couple of times a week like your normal members. So what is active? Well, workouts for some people, calories for others, distance for uh, um, other types of members. If they're running an app, if they're running a good app, then um, uh, obviously a Technogym plug here, Moves is a good one um, because if people are moving, then they're active. As long as we're not just tracking how far they've gone on their Fitbit, and, and they're forgetting about the app. So engaging them within the app, within your digital classes, whether they're live or streamed, getting them onto online challenges as well will be key. And we will find just like we do on the traditional member journey, we'll find members who just, just fly straight away. They are superstars. Nothing's gonna put them off. They're engaged and away they go. What we need to focus on just like in the traditional journey, is the more average member. So looking at regular weigh-ins or progress um, through their new digital fitness habit, what their activity is. And I believe things like online coaching or online personal training, not necessarily putting someone through a boot camp over Zoom, but having a 10, 15 minute chat with them every couple of weeks is gonna add real value 
and people will want to pay for because it's that uh, it's, it's building that community and getting a connection, uh, getting accountability from someone for their fitness. Uh, points and rewards will help with that kind of thing. The social engagement I, I, I mentioned just there really. And the other key, personalized messaging. There's gonna be more data points. There's more opportunities to send more triggered messages, which should still be personalized. Um, but I believe that the, the messaging part of the journey is gonna be really key and not just sending out messages all the time, but surveying members, asking how they're doing, what did they think of that online class? Um, did you do it online live, in which case where well, you mentioned in the comments, or did you do it um, afterwards because you were you were at work while that particular class was on, or you were, you were picking up the kids so couldn't make it? Um, just put a note in the comments on the live stream um, on, the, on the subsequent streamed content and the instructor will just give you a shout back or, or like your comment or say well done. So all these things are going to be key and like I said earlier that there, there will be more data to analyze. Um, it will need more um, uh, analysis of it to basically say okay how are we doing? I believe that digital members are going to be harder to hang on to um, even though we have more data looking at Joe Wicks's drop off in terms of the, the initial um, boom with almost a million viewers live every day. It's dropped down to a couple of hundred thousand now, uh, which is still fantastic. He's doing a great job, but it's really hard to engage with people and to change their behavior online. So using the data there is gonna be key. Um, and one, one final little bit here in terms of digital absentees and levers. Um, I started off thinking, you know, what do we know about absentees already? Well, we know a lot um, because there are a lot of members who already have a digital service who haven't used it since the start of lockdown. So we need to know what absent is and we need to send digital nudges out to these members, possibly making their phone vibrate with a push notification. If you can send a specific push notification to a member who is absent. Um, Otherwise, I think it's the, the old fashioned methods, maybe not a postcard um, or a phone call, although phone calls will still be valid, um, but texts and SMS messages are gonna be key. And the, the critical point for these messages, like I said before, like with the traditional member journey, is going to be the call to action. So it's no good saying you've not worked out for the last week. The member knows that. They know they've not done anything. They're already feeling bad about it. What we need to do is give them a reason to do it whether that's some reward points or let's just look at how you how you performed in your last test and your next one's in a week. Um, that online coaching is going to be key for that. If you can offer that level of service, then I, I do urge you to. Um, and social proof. So um, the fact that you can share, whether it's something as simple as a before and after photo um, or just the, the fact that you were in that class and you want your friends to join you next week. In terms of levers, um, so some of these members who've been offered digital have already left and they have cancelled at the bank. Um, so we do already know something about these members. Um, others, uh, even worse, would have just deleted the app um, because they, they, they weren't using it. So sending them a push notification now is gonna be quite hard. Sending them an email is easier because we do have their email address, hopefully in the CRM. Uh, Sending them a survey and asking them not necessarily why they left, but could we have any feedback? Uh, levers feedback, I didn't cover it earlier because I, I, was, I was trying to get to this part. Um, but levers surveys, levers feedback is some of the most valuable feedback you can get. If you ask new members how they feel, they'll generally feel wonderful and great. And yes, they want to share stuff with their friends. It's a great point to get referrals. If you want really good feedback about what you can do to improve, ask your levers and keep asking them until you get a response. So the levers surveys are, are really, really important. Um, and going back to opt-in and a bit of GDPR, you want people to give you their mobile number, otherwise it's gonna be hard to call them. So uh, getting the mobile number so that you can send encouraging texts and nudges and motivation is also good because it means you'll have a number to call them on once they've gone, okay? And to follow up with them. So that's my, uh, my, my rattle through the traditional member journey um, and how I see that changing as we move to digital. I hope there's lots of um, insights and bits that you can take away there. 
Um, I do think that member that, that clubs who have this digital membership properly drilled down with a, a, a price to it um, are going to do better. Um, if you're just looking at a digital journey as a way to getting people into your club, that's okay. Um, but uh, free is a four-letter word is one of my mantras. We shouldn't be offering anything for free. If we've got a good service and are offering a good, even just a digital membership, there should be a value to it and there should be a charge to it. And that way, we're also going to be able to save our traditional members, our bricks and mortar members. We can drop them back down to a, we can downgrade them, if you like, um, to a digital member journey. And whilst they will mesh together for some members, um, I do see there being a, a, a flip-flop here. For example, seasonal members going uh, to play tennis or doing more outdoor activities in the summer could drop to just digital and then become a traditional member in the winter. Um, so they, there will be a blend, but one of the important things for me is, is to charge for the digital member journey. Look what Peloton are doing and how much they're charging for, for just digital. Um, you can make it valuable, you can really make it worthwhile. So to sum up, um, the five, five key points, um, just to follow on with Ken Hughes's five key points and um, the guys from TA6, learn from lockdown. There's lots of lessons already that you can learn. Um, and even now we can measure engagement of members through lockdown and we can use that data, um, work out what other data we need or have we got enough already um, to develop our product going forwards. Do inductions is, is always a mantra of mine, um, but focus on members in need. So try and identify through the induction process, even through selling it, um, whether members really uh, need it or not and what other support they need. Personalize your messages and build communities, both online and in the club. And finally, deliver digital value. So with these digital memberships, there must be value associated with it and we must charge members for digital fitness. If we don't, someone else will. Um, and I know there's a lot of free content out there, but people want to connect with you, with your club. They are members of your club. They want to see your instructors delivering sessions. So we'll come out of lockdown. Um, and I'll, I'll just pop my summary slides there again um, as those five key points. We'll get on to Q&A in a moment, um, but I think first of all, I just want to hand back to Martin um, to go through a couple of examples and case studies. Are you there, Martin? Hey, Guy, yeah, uh, listening intently and good to rejoin. Um, thank you for that. It was, uh, you know, some really, really interesting detail in there, some great insights as always, so, um, so greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, to everyone on the call, uh, don't worry, we'll get your chance to answer, ask Guy some questions personally in just a moment. Um, what I wanted to do is just um, highlight a couple of examples that I pulled out there from the industry um, of some customers that we're familiar with uh, as Technogym who are delivering pieces of what Guy's talking about already. So Guy, if you would just pop the first slide up for me. Um, fantastic, thank you. So um, Village Hotels, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Village. Uh, they do some fantastic hotels, great standard um, health clubs within hotels, where a lot of gyms, the health club is very much there purely to support um, the, the accommodation. With Village, it's very, very much a health club in its own right. Um, what Village did was they were they were quick with the, con with the social media communications. They were out there quickly and they've been out there consistently with it, I believe. So they, they really did get in touch with their customers uh, really from the outset, right on the front foot. Um, they've been delivering um, a good amount of engaging mobile content during that time. So there's been some workouts of the day. They've had some challenges to keep people engaged. What they've also been delivering is live workouts and they've been using their staff to deliver a lot of those live workouts. So, um, you know, again, for the customers of Village, they're seeing faces they recognize, faces they can engage with, um, you know, keep keeping in touch with, with the membership base, I believe, very, very well, ticking quite a few of the, the points that guys mentioned. Uh, the next example then I've got is, um, is City Space. City Space is University of Sunderland, um, great facility up there, up there on the North Coast. Um, City Space, um, again, have always had a really nice community feel uh, to their building. Um, they were out there very very quickly again on social when this um, when this all first started um, used it really as an opportunity to push 
um, to make sure that everyone who perhaps wasn't currently digitally engaged got digitally engaged quite quickly. Um, again, they've used their staff delivering workouts, so I think it's kept their brand and, and their, their staff at the core of what's been going on. Um, and they've been really engaging regularly with challenges and trying to create different communities online in order to keep in touch with their customers. And then last but not least, we have uh, Fitness Space. Um, so Fitness Space, we're, we're a pretty digitally enabled, um, enabled brand already. Uh, we've seen a, a, a quite a big step change for them during this time. Um, one of the things I particularly like that Fitness Space has been doing is they've been making all of their, all of their classes bookable. Um, so whether it's a virtual class, whether it's um, streaming, um, I think we've, we've probably all seen the research on, on having an appointment and the impact on behavior change and that habit. Uh, we've been saying for ages, you know, group exercise, personal training, it's about um, it's about an appointment you'll keep. So the fact that when I book it, it appears in my phone calendar, it gives me that little nudge or that reminder, I think is is pretty powerful. Um, they've leveraged um, content from providers, uh, but also created some really nice content themselves, investing in a studio. So, so getting a, a high bar of quality in terms of the content that they are they are putting out there. Um, so if you skip on again, guys, so the reason I wanted to show this, I guess, is by, by way of potentially some inspiration, potentially some validation. There's some amazing stuff genuinely going on across the board out there at the moment. Um, and what we wanted to do just by way of, um, before we lead into the questions with Guy and by way of conclusion is, is to say what's next. Um, what we've been trying to do at Technogym is anticipate uh, market needs. Uh, we've been asked for quite a lot of advice and support during this time. Um, so we have created a landing page. Um, you may have received that already by DM. If not, reach out to your, your um, Technogym representative to get it. And what we've tried to do is just pull all of the, the help and support we're offering out there into one place. Um, if you don't see what you need there, there's a little inquiry form. So by all means, pop your details in there or again, reach out to, to the person you, you're most familiar with at Technogym. And from a digital point of view in a webinar, we do want to we want to keep this going. We've also have three fantastic webinars with, with Ken, with the guys from TA6, with Guy today. Um, as Guy's touched, and I think where, where I believe there's an ability to support now as well is also on um, understanding what next. So I think where we are at the moment is there's a lot of um, content being put out there um, free of charge. Everyone is paying forwards. The next step is how do we start to begin to, to bring that back in. How would we like to control it? How do we make sure it represents our brand well? Um, and equally importantly, how can we make this commercially beneficial um, for you guys in the future? Um, so the, the follow-up we'll be doing, um, invitations will be shared this week and we'll be doing a pivot to, pivot to digital session, um, just running through our ideas that we're, we're, we're capturing globally from customers um, and insights we're seeing in the UK. So, um, by way of roundup, hopefully you found those uh, those couple of references interesting. Um, next stages will be coming. Um, now, without further ado, we will pass back to Guy. So um, you've got a um, questions box um, on the side of your go to webinar screen. We'll start to see some some questions. I hopefully pop up in there. Um, Guy, if I could just kick you off. Um, as always, you know, incredibly detailed, some fantastic content. If I haven't started to do anything yet, what, what first? What should I do first of all? Um, I think uh, I think well, it's, it's it's that first point there probably. It's learn from lockdown. Um, it, it, it's learn not only from uh, what has been happening uh, within the industry from lockdown. So obviously, I think I think most days you can be on two or three of these webinars. So if you're still here, well done. Um, but also learn from your members. Uh, I, I think a lot of clubs have, you know, they've, well, I, I know quite a few clubs sent out that we're closing message and haven't sent anything since, or have maybe sent one or two messages, which are just, this is what's happening. So listen to your members, whether it's a survey or even better, a phone call, talk to as many of your members as you can, find out what they want. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and then I think something else that just struck me as well during that um, was, you know, for I think for, for years, we've obviously known that the power of CRM and, and the power of data capture, um, mm -hmm. and most importantly, accurate data capture. Um, yeah. I think it's, um, yeah, obviously, I think probably if anyone hadn't perhaps taken those steps already, um, they certainly may have felt the impact at the moment. So I think certainly one of my observations from, from yours, uh, from your PowerPoint today, certainly was just on the importance of having a, a good CRM process and solid data capture at all points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, communications are are absolutely critical. Um, and I think 
well, one of the things that this shows is that GDPR wasn't done that well in the fitness industry. Um, a few of us knew that already, uh, but the fact that clubs didn't, I mean, it's not, not necessarily about opt-in or opt-out, it's about what your processes are. And if there is a lockdown or if there is another lockdown, I mean, let's hope not, but we need to plan and say, if there is, this is what we will do. Who will you email? Will you email all your members? Um, will you email all the ones who have opted in? No, you should be emailing them all. Will you email all the ones who, whether they've opted in or not, who've only visited in the last six months? So having these processes uh, as well as having good data is key as well. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got some questions starting to appear now, which is fantastic. Um, so guys, hopefully you've all found the little questions box in the toolbar. Um, do type them in. We'll try and get through as many of these as you can. Um, okay. The question there, guys, saying, um, if you've got an organization that doesn't have a digital infrastructure yet, um, i.e. no apps, no online membership, um, what, what mm -hmm. advice would you give to them? Um, uh, the quick answer is a good question. <laughs> the quick answer is get one. But the, the, uh, the better answer is uh, ask your members what they want. So rather than going out and buying an app um, or even worse, being sold an app um, that just lets you book classes or something like that, you know, there's, there's a lot of very average apps out there. Um, you need to find out what your members want from an app um, and then research that. Uh, so yeah, don't rush out and buy one. Think about what you need um, and ask your members what they will need from an app um, and then yeah tr try and try and find an app that does that and I think the other advice is to say which I've, I've, I've done throughout my career really is say look we've been we've bought something that does all of this but actually what we need we just need this part so don't try hmm. and use it all on day one or even month one use the pieces that you need or that your members want I hope that's a hope that's a good answer for that yeah, absolutely. And I think it's um, it's sound advice. It's something um, obviously in technology we work on and my team work on digital projects often. Um, and, and sometimes the temptation is to try and launch absolutely everything all at once, you know, and actually uh, yeah. if, if you have the, the communication tools to do that, you have the resource, you have, you know, the, the ability to deliver operational change and also importantly, consumer change. Fantastic. If not, um, an agile approach is, is great. Put something in, deliver it well, build on it. Put something in, deliver it well, build on it. So, so yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing I would add to that as well is that um, with, with digital solutions that are already in place, they can be delivered very, very quickly. Um, I think that's the thing we, we've seen, um, you know, throughout throughout the, the lockdown period. I know Technogym globally has supported numbers of customers um, either existing or first time just in saying, you know, can you support us with something to get out there? So absolutely, definitely make the, you know, the right decision. Make sure you understand all that you might need. Um, yes. But then you actually, you the, with with digital, it's, you know, the, the lead times, if you like, are, are very, very short. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So take a bit, take a bit longer over the decision making mm -hmm. to get that right. Because, yeah, as you say, you can implement it pretty quickly normally. Uh, so don't, don't don't implement something quickly that you don't need. Or that you yeah. don't want. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, this one's a, a question. Um, they're trusting you with the answer, guy. Um, so, for, for smaller clubs where we need to restrict entry, um, how might we approach members um, that use or can't? Um, should we cancel monthly DD? Should we go to to pay to mm -hmm. use? It's obviously quite a, a, a multiple parts to the question. But what would your thoughts be? Uh, uh, how long have you got? <laughs> Is that <laughs> 10 minutes without, going. Without, without wanting to, I'm not minutes. selling because you can just go and find it for free. But there's, I've done a YouTube, uh, I've done another webinar on managing payments, uh, which you can find on the GG Fit YouTube channel. But um, in a nutshell, you're going to have a bunch of people who are on freeze at the moment. Um, and you're going to have some who want to come off freeze as soon as possible um, and get back into the club. Others are mm. not going to want to come off freeze straight away because they can't afford it. They don't want to visit the club yet. Um, and I think there'll be a certain amount of self-segregation going on there. Um, but there will certainly buy, be an idea of, to use an airline analogy, kind of almost a premium boarding um, where people who have the app, who are maybe paying a bit more, um, will be able to access your club or access a class quicker going forwards. And that's another reason why your digital offering is important because 
if let's say you've got 70% of your members left, you're probably only going to be able to get 30% of them in when you reopen. So the other 40%, you want to be delivering something to them still. So you're not going to turn on a tap and have a, a, a gush of water come out. It's going to be a trickle at first. If you can supplement that with digital membership, with online classes, whether it's streamed, whether it's you know your own content or, or some some like Les Mills or something like that, better if it is your own. Um, then yeah, there's there is a a self almost self segmentation that's going to go on, and and some members are going to want to pay to get it back, others are going to be happy um, to to delay it until later in the year. Great, thank you very much. Um, and I think I'm probably along a similar line. Uh, question said, "What what do you imagine um, reduced opening hours will look like for facil facilities? Um, maybe not necessarily reduced open, but I guess is a we have a we have an operational cost. We have a um, mm. a customer base to deliver. We're uncertain where that customer base is going to be. What what might the start of this look like when we reopen? Um, but yeah, a really good question." Uh, and the, the honest answer is I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't, um, I can't look into the crystal ball on that one. There's been lots of debate online about 24-hour gyms and whether they can continue. Um, it'll come down to cleaning processes and staffing, of course, and whether you need staff in the club uh, to ensure that it is clean and that people are safe and social distancing. You know what common sense your members have, whether they've done the induction. Um, at the end of the day, there's going to be, and, and you're going to need things like apps and good CRM. Um, and I know, I know you've got some things coming out with, with my wellness um, in the next few weeks, Martin, about you know being able to book and being able to limit the number of visits people can make. Um, and it will come down to that and looking at your membership numbers and how many slots or hours or whatever you can offer to members and whether you can limit booking consecutive slots um, or even booking you know more than three slots in advance. Um, all these things will be dependent on club, um, on uh, the, the um, software and systems you're using, and also what your members want, which comes all the way back to, you know, learn from lockdown, speak to your members, tell them what your current plan is and what you're thinking. They will soon tell you what they think of it. Um, and if you get majority agreement, then, you know, those might be your plans going forward. If you get majority disagreement, you might want to look at your plans and adjust them. So it's moving fast. Sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A couple of bingo points in that one as well, I think. So uh, hopefully people were scrolling down. <laughs> um, another one for you, Guy. Um, and we we've got a few minutes left, everyone. So if you've uh, got any questions on the tip of your tongue, do do type them in, and we'll do our best to cover all of them during the time. Um, someone there just saying, great webinar. So so thank you, Guy. Greatly appreciated. Um, how could you encourage members to pass over emails? addresses phone numbers things like that other than obviously uh, away from the hard sell option so what's your thoughts um don't don't tell them that they'll receive offers don't tell them that <laughs> they'll receive news um and and we have this a lot um you know convincing people to give you the right email address when you're signing up you've got to tell them that people who um people who give us their main email address stay longer you know, as people are joining, they want to stay for a long time. It's like an induction or, or a welcome session or whatever we, we call it. Um, you know, people who have a welcome session stay longer. That's how we try and sell it. And you need to sell um, getting the right data off people with, we will give you the occasional nudge. We will give you a high five. You know, you'll be enrolled in the, award, the rewards program. Um, it's much better than we need your email address in case uh, you fall off the treadmill and we need to get in touch with someone in health and safety. It's, that's, that's, that's rubbish. Um, although a really good method is to say you won't be able to book a class if we don't have your email address. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah, it's, it's about selling and it's about overcoming objections. And it will be different from site to site for different demographics. Mm. Uh, but getting a good email address and even on digital, getting people's mobile number because it is hard to get people back just with an email yeah yeah absolutely no and i think we we've certainly seen some of that um when we're launching facilities over time so you know how, how do you get email other people and, and sometimes it, it can be as simple as asking um but often yeah. as well it's also asking but then when somebody says why do you need it we're not then saying because we're going to send you sales offers and things like that so yeah absolutely absolutely um 
and I guess at the moment as well, obviously the um, that there's a step to overcome in how we reach people. If you haven't got people's data at the moment, you're in a little bit of a catch-22. So maybe it's social, maybe it's other means or methods. Because if you haven't got my email address and you haven't got my phone number, short of knocking on my house, or you have to use other channels in order to gather those. So there's probably a, a bit of a gap and an opportunity at the moment to be to be um, for sure. To be, um, and I and I double back to the this this new induction that we're going to do. Um, mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity there which I, I I glossed over. I meant to mention as we went through, but you know, checking people's data. But you brought the point up, Martin, with um, you know having the right details in in the CRM. As people are rejoining the club, um, use this as an opportunity not just to talk about their goals and build rapport with them and listen to them and find out about them, but to make absolutely sure the data you've got is correct. Uh, because we don't want there to be a second lockdown. But if there is, we want to be able to communicate with you um, and let you know what's happening. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and I'd perhaps also just ask to add to that as a, as a final point, guys, as well, to everyone there is, is is understanding, making sure that everyone in your building understands that importance as well. Um, could well be, a, you know, a bit of an inspect what you expect. And, you know, once you people are back again, walking around and asking everyone in different departments what, what details will we like from people and why do we need it? Um, sometimes the answer is surprising. So, yeah, just making sure that everyone understands that, you know, there's an opportunity here and, and certainly there's an opportunity to de-risk the future. So, And, and to, to, to double it up again, check the data you've got for all your staff. Um, that's something that a lot of sites have found out um, through lockdown is keeping in touch with staff. The ones who are doing it well yeah. and keeping in touch with staff, even the ones who are furloughed, is really, really critical. Uh, you know, reaching out to them, giving them a call, just checking everyone's all right. Um, so, yeah, start start at home. Uh, start with, yeah. you know, your own data. No, it's fantastic. And you know what, I think that's a, it's a great, um, you know, it's a great point potentially to finish on is um, obviously so much of this is focused around how can we keep customers, how can we attract new customers. Um, we know one of the um, one of the biggest things that keeps customers are your team. Um, and change over in staff has an impact. So actually during this time, you know, staff are away from your businesses, showing them the same kind of love and support and, and contact and engagement that you would you would give to your customers. It's um, you know perhaps easy to be overlooked in everything that's going on. So having the right um, the, the right the right contact details there is obviously key. For sure. Fantastic. Right. Well, we have um, we have some other questions, but I think we're we're, we're almost out of time at the moment. So, um, is there any? Um, you know, Guy, obviously, you've given us a huge amount of information. You've got your your summaries. Um, maybe would you like to just run through? There's so much information. Maybe would you like to run through those those five points again, just by by roundup and headlines? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Le learn learn from lockdown, uh, not just uh, from webinars or doing mindfulness sessions or you know getting out for some exercise or digital detoxing yourself uh, but learn what's going on at other clubs learn from your staff learn from your members um, measure the engagement although clubs are closed at the moment there is still uh, a lot of some people would say even more exercise data out there so um, do, do do some measures do some analysis on that and find out what members are doing and what members are not doing um, Get ready to do lots of inductions. Uh, this is a great opportunity to do to do lots more welcome appointments and improve your data, um, and focus on the members that need it. Um, Personalise your messages, build communities. Um, that's that's one of the big things. That's why people stay longer. Um, it's because of community. It's because of great instructors. Um, it's because of personalised messages. Um, and yeah, finally, if you deliver digital value, both for a digital online membership and also in club um, and you charge for it then that's 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 going to be the way um that, that, that we go forwards and come out of this uh, more positively i think the biggest change is going to be looking at that transition between um the, the bricks and mortar membership and this new digital membership and how people flow almost between those or how they how they overlap so i hope that was useful um and if, if you want if if you do have other questions i'm happy to take them on an email or on a tweet or on linkedin um so do, do, do send me an invite on there and um as long as it's a, a quick question i can answer in a few minutes if it's a if it's a, a an essay or a proposal i'll happily look at that as well actually so let me know fantastic um guy always a pleasure to talk to you um much appreciated um thank you for taking the time thank you for passing on your, your experience and your information to everyone on the call has been some fantastic attendees some great 
great questions. It's been really, really well received based on the comments. Um, again, just in closing from me, um, we do have that, um, that landing page um, covering off the, the variety of different support and help that we can provide to anyone out there. So by all means, have a look at that. If what's on there is not quite right, then there is a, um, you know, there, there is a, an information section you can fill in on there. Um, and also by way, of, by way of sneaky preview, the invites will be going out this week on our, our next one, which is Pivot to Digital. So just understanding what digital solutions can be used to support um, some of the fantastic ideas and concepts that Guy has shared. So um, again, really appreciate everyone's time. Um, thank you for dialing in. Um, stay safe, everyone. Guy, thanks to you as well, as always. Um, look forward to catching up with everyone soon. Take care, everyone.